Hi, welcome back to Mari Monday, where I answer questions that you ask me on my marshmallow and I try to give as much advice as I possibly can in a very, well, not so short time span. I, I try to keep these videos under 30 minutes. So why don't we get started with our very first marshmallow? How would you suggest I figure out a unique design for my model? I don't want to give specifics, but I feel like most of my ideas have already been taken. Oh man, this one is a tough one to answer because like, mm, I've been doing VTubing for about four years now and I've been kind of reworking my concept like numerous times. Like I've gone through redesign after redesign after redesign. But one thing that has been very consistent with me is my lore and my background and like the things that I chose to kind of represent myself. Like I have always just been a symbol of dreams and that has been consistent whether it's i'm changing my hair color my eye color maybe my clothing that has still been the same motif so my suggestion to you while you're trying to figure out your design is what kind of like motif or theme or aesthetics do you want within your design i think that is a little bit easier to start with versus like oh should i have like twin tails should i have like cat ears should i do like the little droopy floppy you know the shy lily ear thing like those are the kind of stuff i feel like is something you decide after once you figure out what you want your model to represent like what kind of character is it going to represent so figure out if you want to be like a sundere do you want to be a mommy do you want to be like a little sister little brother like things like that figure that stuff out first then you can kind of go alongside with it and honestly hire a artist to help you with the design there's so many like amazing character designers and illustrators out there. My friend Iris is a lovely example who's helped me come up with some new designs for my model. So get some concept artists to help you. All right, let's go to our next question. Hi Mari, I recently started streaming and the main problem so far is that I always run out of energy too quickly. I usually plan to stream for at least three hours, but I keep falling into the same pattern. I'm extremely talkative during the first 20 to 30 minutes, at least by my standards. Then I lose 90% of my energy. Then I get bored and suddenly end stream before the two hour mark. I'm very new to streaming and will most likely adapt sooner or later, but I would appreciate a head start. Thank you. Um, that's very interesting because I feel like when I first started streaming, maybe I had this problem too. It's been a long time since I could remember the difficulties that I had. One thing I do remember is that I always ran out of things to talk about. Like I could... I don't know, maybe I would have something for like the first 30 minutes and then afterwards I would just be like, okay, what do I do next? And this is something that you get better at the more you practice and the more you keep doing it. Now, I'm not saying like, oh, you just got to keep streaming and eventually get better. Like, yes, that will help you. But if I had to give like some advice to help give you a head start is write down things to talk about before you start streaming. And I don't mean necessarily right before because if you're trying to crunch creativity within a few minutes, you're not gonna really get a whole lot. But throughout the week, like every day, if something interesting happens, write that down. So that way when you're on stream, if you run out of things to talk about, you can quickly reference your notes or take like a glance and be like, oh yeah, that's right. This So this crazy thing happened to me the other day. And then you can start talking about that. That is one thing that I could think of that might help you. But in terms of like your energy levels, that is like, that is just something I think you shouldn't be beating yourself up over. You kind of have to figure out if you want to be a high energy streamer or a low energy streamer or someone who's kind of like in between. Because unless if you're trying to be the next Kai Sinat or like Chibi Doki, you don't need to be talking like really, really fast and doing all this like crazy stuff the entire stream. That's not like everyone's content style. So just make sure that the things that you are doing on stream are interesting enough to you because if you're getting bored, whether that's like the game that you're playing, choose a different game that is much more exciting. Or if you're talking about stuff and you're getting bored from talking, well, I mean, you gotta find some stuff that genuinely interests you. So sharing things that are about your hobbies will help. Or again, like I said, write things down have happened to you throughout the day. Just things like that that will help keep your own interest because streaming shouldn't be boring to you. If it is boring to you, I mean, streaming might not be for you. Maybe you might like just making videos. That's something to kind of think about in the future. I feel like when you're coming up with your streams, make sure it's stuff that you're genuinely excited about. That's that's the start. All right, next question. Hi Mari, this is Volk. I wanted to ask your thoughts on charity streams and how to go about sharing them. Is there a complicated process in starting them up? Do you notify the charity in question when you start the process? I was curious about the behind the scene take on the process. I was thinking about doing charity streams once I've started streaming. 
Well, well, well. First of all, thank you, Volk, for submitting this to my marshmallow. I greatly appreciate it. Now, charity streams are kind of, um, <clears throat> they are a lot of work depending on how far you want to go. So I know in my own personal experiences, I've had charities personally reach out to me to see if I would be interested in wanting to work with them. But you can reach out to the charity yourself and say, hey, I am so and so. I really want to help raise money for like this charity. I really believe in like the cause. If it's something like cancer, you could say, hey, like I've had a lot of family who's had issues with like cancer. I'd like to help raise money for it. And that would be the best way to kind of go and reach out to them because some of them, they have their own campaign and like their own way of doing things with how they do it for streamers. It's a little bit different for YouTubers, but for streaming, some of them might use a Tiltify campaign link. Some of them might have their own campaign. They might have like a website and they might have their own custom overlays and assets. You might have to make those yourself. It really depends on the charity, like how big the charity is, how popular it is with streamers. And like, if the charity is even interested in collecting donations like that, I know it's really weird that some charities are not like down for that kind of stuff. It's interesting, but there, it, it really just depends on the charity. So it never hurts to reach out and ask that specific charity what their process is because they will give you a much better indication than what I can. I know in terms of like the behind the scenes stuff, once you get accepted into doing stuff for the charity, the next step is to either one, see if they have like their own campaign link. If not, if you have to create it, a lot of them are really nice and they can like show you how to create those campaign links, especially if they've worked with streamers in the past Then you can gather some assets from them. Or if you're very creative, you can make your own and make sure it gets approved by them, like you can show it to them. And then when you start streaming all of your games, I, depending on what kind of charity it is, you have a lot of like creative freedom to do whatever you want. Some people like to do drawings, some people do like gaming challenges, some people come up with like incentives for these charities. There is like a lot of creativity that goes behind it, but it does depend on what your limits are and your creative abilities. So again, it doesn't hurt to just reach out and ask them and they can kind of guide you through the process of that. So I hope that can help. All right, let's go to our next question. Hi, thank you for so much for all the advice you give for us current upcoming VTubers. So I want to stream a game that I enjoy playing, but streaming wise, this said game doesn't perform well and only really does well as YouTube videos, which is putting me off wanting to stream that game and just stream a different game that does well. Should I just stream the game I enjoy the most? And the next question I have is, do you consider a PNG tuber a VTuber? as I'll be starting out a PNG tuber before I can afford a 2D model. Thank you. So I actually want to answer these questions in reverse because I feel like the second question is a lot easier to answer than the first question. The uh, answer to the second question is I do consider PNG tubing as part of VTubing. It's part of like that whole umbrella of faceless content creation. And I feel like when it comes to like streaming, when people stream with like a PNG tuber, you can get kind of creative with it by having multiple different images and like toggling different talking and expressions. So even though you don't have a live 2D model, you can still emulate a lot of like animation and like more expressiveness just with some static images. It takes like a little bit to set up, but once you got it set up, it's just keyframing everything. Or not keyframing, I'm hotkeying everything and then you should be good to go and it makes them much more expressive. If you just have like the PNG just sitting there and chilling, or if you're just using like Discord Reactive, which you can still put images on Discord Reactive and swap between those two. That is possible. I feel like a lot of people in like live streaming, that might not always be the most enjoyable thing to look at because there's not a lot of movements and people who like to watch live streams typically like to watch a lot of things moving and going around. The reason why stuff like that does really well in like YouTube videos is because you can edit. You know what I mean? Like you can add effects on screen after, you can do all this other like squishing and zooming and all this other crazy stuff on the screen. But in terms of your first question with the game, unfortunately, depending on the audience that you built up, they have what they like. If they're not really interested in like a game, you can't force them to watch that on stream. So ask them. Ask them what kind of games they would like to see you play. Ask your community on like Discord, make some posts on there and see what they want. And then try to play those games and see if they will come watch those. In terms of like YouTube videos, the reason why it does better is because people on YouTube are actively searching for that game. So you are attracting people who like that game. So you have a couple different options. Option one is to like make more content of that game on YouTube and then tell those people on YouTube that you stream so the people who like that game will come watch you play that. Or two, you could just 
make it kind of like a separate thing entirely where you just make videos on that, but then you'll stream like other games. It really d also depends how similar those games are. Cause if you're playing like Minecraft one day and then CSGO the next day, I mean, mm, usually people like a similar style type of game. So if it's like that vastly different, then I could see why people would want to skip out. But in terms of like storytelling games, those ones people also typically like roughly the same genre so very vague for me to give a solid answer for this since i don't know what games these are so hopefully i can give you somewhere of a start for this all right so let's read our next question good day mari i was wondering do you think switching to streaming on youtube rather than twitch is a good idea or is multicast the way to go especially since you mentioned in a recent mari monday that youtube likes keeping people on the platform and i already have a second channel where i post my covers um i feel like for this question i'm a little confused on one thing because you're saying that you have a second channel where you post your covers so what are you posting on your first channel like are you posting gaming content chatting content are you streaming on the first channel or or are you only streaming on twitch because in my opinion this is kind of how twitch works Twitch doesn't really give you any discoverability unless if you randomly win the lottery and get someone who wants to randomly like raid into you or if you have friends who want to raid into you. That's the only way you can get discovered on that platform. So what you have to do is you got to post on social media, you got to post on YouTube and constantly, and I mean constantly tell people, hey, come check out my live streams. Hey, I'm going to be streaming. Hey, 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 live stream, like check me out, check me out. You have to constantly bring people from other platforms to your Twitch stream. And if you have two channels and one of it is just song covers, I mean, if you're like a VTuber, you have the luxury of just using your channel to post your song covers and then like your highlights and whatever stuff that you're interested in. Like VTubers have like a little bit of a leeway to post more variety on their channels compared to other YouTubers. That doesn't mean you should be posting whatever the hell you want. You should still have like an actual strategy with your YouTube content, but you have a bit more leeway due to the idol culture aspect of VTubing. Like that is a privilege that VTubers get compared to other content creators. So I feel like mm, personally, I multi-stream because I have discovered that having a VOD channel is kind of useless now. The fact that we can actually live stream on YouTube, we don't need to have a dedicated VOD channel anymore because your VOD's right there on the live stream. Like if they want to watch the VOD, you can just link it in a video and they can just or go to your live tab and just watch the VOD there. So that's really like why I like multi-streaming is because I can be on Twitch. So people who like the Twitch culture can enjoy it. And then people who just want to lurk and watch me on YouTube have that option too. And the VOD's right there and I can timestamp it and I don't have to worry about downloading and re-uploading and all this other crazy stuff. So that's like my theory behind multi-streaming. There's nothing wrong with like streaming on different platforms, especially if you're just starting off and you're trying to figure out where is your audience? Are they mostly on Twitch? Are they mostly on YouTube? Like those are things to consider. And also I feel like the more important thing to think about is when you're planning your live streams, how are you planning on making it into a YouTube video after? Like if someone's going to sit there and watch your live stream, is it entertaining to watch after the live stream is over or is your live stream one of those types of live streams where you really just have to be there and then afterwards it's like re-watching it and it's not eh, it, it's it's just better when it's like live and happening because if it's just better when it's live and happening then you might need to start tweaking your streaming ideas a bit more because what you want to aim for is replayability you want your bods to be rewatchable and be like oh that's right i want to remember like these moments i'm going to go back and like watch this or if someone is new to your channel they'll want to sit there and like watch it so those are things that uh, i personally think are more important rather than like coming up with multiple channels i feel like i get a lot of questions who constantly ask me about this multiple channel thing and i'm wondering if it's because i have multiple channels like um if you're interested in learning about my multiple channel theory and why i do that let me know in the comments down below and maybe i'll make just a dedicated video on that topic alone because i i really just i don't want you all to overthink the whole multiple channels thing there's there is a reason why i'm doing it and i am 
an exception, not the rule. So let me know if that's something you're interested in learning more about. All right, let's go to our next question. Hi, Mari. I was wondering about your thoughts on a trend slash habit that I've been seeing around where VTubers and streamers post after stream tweets thanking raiders and mentioning who they raid into. Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. I forgot people still do this. Yeah, people have been doing this since I first started VTubing. And then I used to also do this. I used to like, you know, go live. And then at the end, I would thank everybody and say who I rated into next. And it's like, mm, it's like a really nice gesture to like thank someone and tell like the people who are following you, oh, who am I checking out? But over the years, I have kind of realized like even myself when I'm scrolling through things, I don't really care about that kind of stuff. Like typically if I like a creator, I like to watch just that creator. Maybe I might check out this streamer that my Oshi oh, is you know, talking about Mary, but I have to like really be in that mood because here's the problem. When normally when I do go check out these other creators, they're not making any content that is remotely something that I am interested in. Like if my Oshi plays a lot of horror games and then she rated into someone who just plays like Dark Souls, I'm not into Dark Souls personally. So I'm not going to sit there and watch this person play Dark Souls. Like I'm not interested in it. So I'm not saying like, oh, you should never do it or whatever. It is a really nice gesture. And who knows, maybe your community might actually like the person that you had rated into or the people who you're thanking who had rated into you. But like, you know, if that person's content is not really something that your community is interested in, it's not going to help them or benefit them in the long run. It, it doesn't hurt, you know, but like I, I don't do it anymore because I just um don't really get a lot of good feedback from it or good engagement from it from my audience and I think it makes kind of sense because my audience is other aspiring like VTubers so I, I get why like I can't really do that but maybe you can maybe your community will actually like, go support them and stuff like I, I don't know it depends on your community and I do feel like be careful when you're constantly mentioning who you're rating into and thanking people because if you have like a bunch of people's names crammed into like a tweet it gets kind of spammy and it's kind of like, it can, it can be a little like annoying. So it just, there's, there's ways to do it. I feel like, and mm, it really just depends on how you want to shout people out. Like, I don't know. I, I'm, I guess I'm indifferent about it. I don't feel like I have the best answer for this since I'm indifferent. And again, it doesn't work for me. And I never got good feedback when I tried doing it, but I do see other people do it and they do get good feedback. So don't look at me as the example for it. It's It, it never really worked for me. <laughs> All right, so let's go to our last question of the day. Hi, Mari. I'm an artist and a gamer. I have yet to properly start on social media, and I wanted your advice. Creating a data back from making art content is hard. I've been doing it for a long time, but it's still just not enough, whereas gaming content is easy to make but I get afraid it can be discouraging for viewers to watch if the streamer gameplay is laggy, especially with games like Genshin or Honkai Star Rail, and both are very hard to entertain through. Yet, I want to do both. What do you recommend? Should I make a channel only for gaming or should I make an art YouTube channel? Both are completely different niches and I want to do both, but I feel like I gotta sacrifice one to build an audience. What is your opinion on this? And if you do say art channel, how do you grow an art channel on any social media considering art takes a lot of time to make. Thank you. Have a nice day. This is like a very loaded question because you're asking me multiple different things here. So like I, I'll try to give my best opinion on all of this, but this is you're asking for a lot right now. And like I only got so much brain cells to, to really like process this. So the first step of this is deciding between if you want to do art or gaming. So if you're going to be doing gaming, Obviously, picking like the niche of the games you're going to be doing is important, which it looks like you want to do things like Genshin and Honkai Star Rail. You very well could make a whole channel dedicated to Genshin videos, Honkai Star Rail, like making lore, how to tips, like interesting glitches, like pulls, gacha pulls and all this other like stuff. Like there's so many different ways you can make videos on that topic and the same goes for art for art you could do like speed painting story time you could do how to do art you could do like fan art stuff or you could do art challenges you do commentary on art like there's a lot of things you could do in that topic too i don't recommend doing both on the same channel these are two very like drastically different things that belong on two separate channels this is specifically youtube on 
Twitch, if you were streaming on Twitch, you can do like gameplay and then do art days. Like you could have like a dedicated, like on Tuesdays we draw art and then, or, or like you maybe you could do two days. Like on Tuesdays and Thursdays, those are our art days. And then like Saturday and Friday is our gaming days. Like you could do that for streaming wise. But in terms of like YouTube content, you want to separate those because the chances of people who want to watch your Genshin content, they do not care about the art stuff. So you can kind of like, mess around and experiment to see what works on your live streaming stuff because people are more forgiving for live streams by youtube it's pretty cut and dry like these are completely different niches also really depends on what is it you're doing if you wanted to combine these somehow then the only way i could personally think of it is making art for genshin characters so you could do some genshin like style videos but then you can make art videos that are about the Genshin characters. It just depends on how you package everything. It depends on what your strategy is. Like, do you want to do let's play content or commentary? Are you making memes? Like reactionary, funny, highlighted memes? Or are you doing slow commentary stuff about your feelings and stuff that's happened to you when you just have like some B-roll? That's more important in terms of like growing your stuff because like in terms of like growing an art channel on social media that is like a completely different conversation because now you got to ask yourself are you taking art commissions like what kind of audience do you want it seems to me anon like you don't understand who your audience is and i think the first step of this is figuring out who you want to make your content for what is it that you are very passionate about and i when i say passionate i mean can you make a hundred videos on art how about 500. How about a thousand? Or can you do that with Genshin? Can you make a hundred videos on Genshin? 500, a thousand? How many videos can you actually make on these topics? And after you figure those two things out, okay, then you can kind of decide, okay, what should I pursue? Because you could very well just do art as like a hobby and occasionally post your art stuff while you still make all of your Genshin content. Or if you want to focus on having an art career then then that can be a conversation for another day and you could just play genshin just for fun just to decompress like your live streams is going to focus on art but some days you might just play gaming and you're not going to try to make any content out of it it's just a day for you to hang out with your community and chill there's there's ways to do both without having to make content around both just one of them is going to have to be a hobby and that is the ultimate thing you're going to have to decide in the end so i hope that could Give you a bit more insight on it because that is like a lot to unpack and yeah hopefully it can clear up some confusion for you and that's all i have for today with that being said thank you so much for watching if you would like to submit a question for me to answer for my next mario monday i'll have the link down for me in the description below thank you all so much for watching everybody and remember everything reminds you of something bye